how to turn a colour image into black and white very quickly using procedural textures in Affinity Photo. You can use equations such as this, and as long as the equation is exactly the same in all the channels, the red, green and blue, you can see the result. Here's the colour, here's the black and white. So you can go, instead of 4.5, you can put 8.5. But again, as soon as you do that, you'll notice what happens. It goes red there, we'll go to the other one and put 8.5 there as well as 8.5 there. And you can see straight away, you've got yet again another black and white image from that. So I had to start with this. So let's just cancel. Got this image, simply go to filters and go down to colors and procedural texture. In the procedural texture, you'll get this blank screen, blank panel. What you need to do, go here, little plus. So click there and that will add the red, and it's currently zero. That's what it defaults to. Click plus again, again, you get green this time, and it defaults to zero. So click plus again, and you can see now you've got red, green, and blue, and they're all equal zero, which is black for RGB. Well, once you've done that, you can change these, and you can put a very basic one. You can put bracket, and this is always a good one, just red plus green plus B, and then divide by three. And then you get the red back. You can see the red. Very useful is this. You've got a split view. So go down here, just click here, and you can then see you've got this split. So you can just compare. Now, sometimes it's not always the easiest to move, but there is position it there. Because I've got R plus G plus B, etc., divided by three, there, what I can do, I can then paste that. I can just simply copy it and paste it or just type it. And you can see then I can put it in there. And now I've got, again, I've got the gray or black and white. What I can now do is I can modify this. I can put 2.5. So as long as I go with 2.5 in all of them, now if I go just there, you can see it's obviously red because you've obviously just emphasized more the red there. And again, you can do 2.5 times red there. And again, 2.5 times red, but it's all again grayscale. And you can create all kinds of variations of a grayscale image using this approach with procedural texture. To make it even easier, you can go down the bottom here and you've got these custom inputs. So custom inputs or parameters you can modify. And all you need to do is click one of these. Now the best one I always find is the R. You don't have to, you could go with Z, perfectly reasonable, but then it's just integer one, two, three, etc. Which if you go for R, it's like 1.3, 1.4. And you can put A, and you can click it again, B, C, and D. And one good thing about this panel is you can stretch it. So you can stretch it down so you can actually see all those panels. And the reason I've gone for A, B, C, and D, they're all set to zero at the moment, always slightly annoying default. Personally, I wish it was set to one, or if you could set a, a default for those, because I always prefer it to be one because I generally use it as a multiplication. So here, instead of 2.5, you can put A. And as long as you put A here, and this one, and you can put A there. Now at this point, obviously I've just got the A. But I can put, of course, here with the G, and obviously B in all of them as well. And I'm gonna put, obviously, B and C. Now you can see I've got A, and I've got B, and I've got C, all these parameters. So I can go down here, and instead of using one, of course, what I can do, I can put 1.6. And that's changed in all of those equations for all those channels. So I can go here, 2.3, and you can see what happens each time. And also you can go here, you can just click, just a little here, and you can boost it up and you see what happens. It becomes obviously a lot lighter. Go that way. Now another option, you can also see here I've got three. Well, I'm gonna use the D here that I've got here, and I'm gonna put there, D. I can do it quickly there, D. So now I'm dividing by one. Obviously you can see it's a lot lighter. Well, I don't want that. If I can put it just back to three, or I can go for 12 to make it a lot darker. And you can of course make it 20. And you can see all kinds of different grayscale or black and white designs can be created using this approach. But also what you can do, you can save as a preset. I mean, it's great you've got all these equations, 
all very nice, but without actually being able to sort of store it away, it just makes it a little bit easier. You can go up here to the presets and you go here. Now, if you've already got this preset, if you've already created this thing, and it's quite possible I've created it before, it will know, it will look through the list and say, oh no, you've got this one already. So you won't get that create preset. You can say create preset, and then you can call it black and white, or whatever. So you can go black and white, and you can give it a category. And there's a number of categories, channel adjustments, probably a pretty reasonable one. Click create, and it's stored away. Now, of course, you can also replace it as well, or rename, delete, and all those options. So you, but it's great, you can now use it at any time in the future. So you can come back to this equation, this procedural texture, and you can apply it again. And you simply click apply. And there you have the result. Now, of course, another great thing about this is that there's always this layer and fade procedural texture. So if you don't want it completely black and white, you can always go to fade and you can go either that way or that way. So maybe make it slightly less colorful. You've also got blend modes, so you can run through the blend modes as well, color dodge, go that way. And you can use that to create all kinds of different colorful designs as well and click apply with that. And of course, once you've got that, you can always go back to the filter and repeat procedural texture. Of course, that will apply the black and white and you'll end up with a very black image at that point. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Please subscribe, please click like or dislike. Thank you much.